Hey, how are you? I'm John. This is Mr. G's Workbench. If you're a first time visitor, thanks for coming. If you're a return visitor, thanks for coming back. So, hot on the heels of, uh, if you're watching in sequence, hot on the heels of, uh, of Get Off My Bench featuring the 72nd Scale Boston, which turned out to be an, uh, a fail on my part, more than anything. Uh, today we're gonna move on. We've got a, uh, we're gonna start a new build review. And today's build review is going to be going to be Kitty Hawk's uh, SU30 Flanker C. They, they have it marked as MK, and it's going to be MK, and then the last letter in the version depends on the on the country that had it. Venezuelan was MKV or MK2, depending on what you look at online. Uh, the Chinese had one, that's MKK. Uh, the Indians have one, MKI. Interestingly, um, when you look at the, the sprues in the box, it's, it's basically an SU-27UB, a two-seater, which is what the SU-30 was based off of. It was a proof of concept plane at the beginning more than anything, apparently. I'm no flanker expert. It's designated flanker C, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to do an inbox review because, uh, honestly, I think inbox reviews are kind of stale. You can probably find one easily. I think uh, Mike Benolkin at uh, Cybermodeler has uh, there's an inbox review on, on his website. I'll post a link to that one in, in, uh, in the comments. And uh, if you, if you want to see the parts breakdown, you can look at it there. We're going to look at the parts as we go along the same way we did in the MiG-25 build. Thanks again to Jim at Kitmaker for uh, providing the kit for this review. Uh, there'll be a link to the kit maker uh, family of websites down below as well. Uh, he provided the MiG-25, he's provided the, the Sequoia 30. Why don't we jump right into it and let's see what we, we're going to get for the first couple of steps. I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about this build in, in the sense that I, I've built Kitty Hawk's uh, Sequoia 35, uh, which was actually, it was an enjoyable build. It's, it's in my display case. I use the... Uh, the black and white camouflage scheme. Aside from the decals, which were a little iffy, uh, the build overall was good. The fit was good. Uh, I think Kitty Hawk has stepped up their game in terms of uh, in terms of a lot of the the kit engineering decisions they make. There's still a couple in this kit that I'm pretty certain are going to turn out to be uh, awful, but we'll get into that as we get along. So let's take a look at the instructions and see what we need to start. All right, before we start, a uh, quasi-open uh, box review. Just a quick overview since we've got the instructions here with the parts map. Compared to a lot of the other Kitty Hawk kits, including the SU-35, this is a really bare-bones kit. Uh, they haven't included any of their uh, usual uh, resin doodads that they tend to add into other kits. There's none of that. They haven't even provided you with weapon sprues, so there's no weapons. Uh, looks like there's a couple of uh, uh, twin pylon mounts, and that's it. They don't even give you missiles. They, so this is truly like a, a you're building a demo uh, version of the plane, is what it comes down to. So let's move on to begin at the beginning. Step one has you building the, the two ejection seats. Uh, it's, it, I can tell you it's slightly different from the ones in the SU-35 in terms of uh, just a couple of way, bits of the assembly. You've got the, uh, you've got B1, which is the, uh, the seat pan. You've got uh, B12 is the seat cushion. And get that focused in. You've got the headrest, uh, B23. B11 is the, the rear of the headrest that you're going to mount to the seat. And you can see it's got the ever popular little ejection pin thing sticking out of the front of it that'll have to be cut off. B71. You've got the, the armrests. B57 and B58. Those are there. I mean, they're tiny. And I'll give Kitty Hawk credit this time, but some of the tiny uh, delicate parts here for the headrest are in fact uh, well molded onto the, the parts tree. So really 
There we go. That's the 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 rest of the headrest assembly B55 and 56. Uh, you've got the ejection handle B22. And uh, the other part of the leg restraint, uh, there it focused, nice. So you're going to clean those all up, put them together, and you're going to wind up with this. Here's the, the seat assembled. Uh, looks decent. I, I mean, my opinion, my personal opinion, it looks like the headrest could be lowered. You know, why why is it got to sit so high? Is big tall guy sitting in there? I don't know. So the only thing left to add on to this is going to be the photo etch seat belts. So we're going to get the other seat built up, and then we will uh, we'll get the rest of the cockpit together. Speaking of which, I'm going to skip ahead of here. Uh, I've already done step two, which is the both rear bulkheads for the forward and back cockpits. Uh, they were they're pretty straightforward. There they are. They're slots, open slots in the bottom of the front and back cockpits that that those uh, rear bulkheads will snap into. They they pretty much literally snapped into there. The fit was good. The uh, the fit of the ejection seat rails was good, and even these little B2 these things here. They were molded decently on the sprue and easy to remove, easy to clean up. The only thing I would say is, see, there's little sinkholes in each one. So I'll hit them with some Vallejo putty before I paint. So, and then the other thing I did was I attached uh, H2 and H3 of the rear, the extra rear consoles you can see there. The detail, the molded in detail of the cockpit is, is I, I think it's pretty nice. I mean, that... That's better than a lot of other kits. For the purpose of this kit, I think these are actually pretty nice. So I've got that done already. Uh, that'll be waiting for paint. I've got the control stick set aside. Uh, I still have to do the step involving the, the rudder pedals. They're, they're very finely detailed, not finely detailed, they're finely molded and the trick is just getting them off the sprue. It's not like the MiG-25 where um, the minute you try to cut it off the parts tree, they, they break in half or anything. These actually were pretty robust considering their size. So again, these are going to be looking for a photo etch. So you're going to see we've got, we've got the seat belts on there. We've got the uh, straps for the rudder pedals on there. And it looks like we've got some of the uh, chaff dispensers on there, if I am guessing right. So... We'll get, uh, we'll get the seat belts on, we'll get the straps on the rudder pedals, and the next time I show you this, everything will be uh, assembled, possibly painted, I don't know. So, stand by. All right, we've got the cockpit assembly completed. Now we move on to step six. Step six looks to be the, the nose radar. It's gonna consist of C1 which is a nicely molded part right there. That's, that's some pretty good detail there. So we got C1. C5 is the bottom of that piece. That's there. Again, nicely molded. D10. Again, the molding is nice and crisp on these parts. They came off without issue. And the last part is E16, which looks to be the bulkhead, which has the usual ejector pins on the back. They direct you here. You're going to take E16 and you're going to cut this, this curved notch out in it. And Kitty Hawk was nice enough to mold in a, a cutout in the back for us so we know just what to take out looks to be what's gonna that's gonna accommodate the uh the mid-air refueling boom uh insert so let's get this assembled we'll get that painted up we'll take a look at it for once i might entertain kitty hawk's concept and uh, actually leave all these compartments open that are that are made to be open
Let's take a look at this assembled and painted and we'll see what we think. All right, radar assembly is finished. Now we're gonna move on to step seven, which is the nose gear bay. So first part of the nose gear, we got E21. Yeah, it's a nose gear bay. I'm not looking for, you know, conduits everywhere in this. No one's ever gonna see it. Uh, E7 is the one end of the, of the gear bay. E3 is the other end of the gear bay. There's conduit if you're so inclined. Right, there you go. There. And then you got the sides, 17 and 18. A reasonable amount of detail on those. So I'm gonna slap that together and then we will move on to step eight. Well, after the nose gear bay is assembled, steps eight and nine have you uh, building up these uh, these structures that are gonna go in the lower fuselage. The engines are gonna slot into these. Uh, the problem is, like a lot of stuff, I started building this and like a lot of Kitty Hawk stuff, there's a nice vague description of where part A8 is going to meet up with A17. I mean, if you, if you just kind of... Here's uh, 33 and 17 together, because that was easy, because there was actually a, a tab built into that one. But if I just try to build that the way it is, I, there's nothing to hold this together. There's nothing holding that together. So I think the best way to handle this, and maybe it'll come back to bite me later, is to skip ahead to step 11. You would install these assemblies from eight and nine into the lower fuselage along with these little extra pieces that fill the spaces on the sides. So I think what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try to do this so that you can watch. Let me get this out of the way. So let me start by putting this in. I believe this is 65. Again, there's no positive locating. There's no positive locating for this. Make sure it's sitting nice and flush. All right, and there it is. We've got that. And we've got this assembly. The pieces we know go together right. We can slide in. There's a track there to the side piece to, to mount into. So I'm gonna tack that in. Alright, and then we have this uh, A8 that nobody is ever gonna see again and that's gonna go and they would have you put this B34 piece. See that? And again, it, it, I had to cut these off the sprue. There were three attachment points. That's why it's got this little bend in it now, because before I put that A8 on, I'll, I'll put a little cement on one side of this. I don't know if this is gonna serve any purpose going forward, but standard hot mess. So I've got that rod in there. Before I even start, I'm gonna put a little track of extra thin on there. Dexter will keep snoring while I do this. So that's kind of in. Oh man, I apologize for the bad camera angles. Getting that somewhat set up. All right, so there. I highly recommend building steps eight and nine up inside the lower fuselage because there's just no way you're gonna get this done otherwise. 95 maybe even 99% of people aren't going to show that off. So was, was this trip really necessary? Step 10 is the engine assemblies. These are all the parts you're going to need to wind up with one of these. So here is a completed engine. Let me get the light over here so you can see this. Oops. One of the little speckly pieces just fell off. You'll see this. This is what you'll see through the, the open access panel. I'll show you like a close up of it. I'll show it to you now while you're ogling this. So all these pieces are what you would use to get to this. That's all you're gonna see down the chute from the intake. You're gonna have an exhaust on top of this. So this is gonna be even deeper and not seen. What you really need, if you're just building this plane and you're just gonna 
you're not going to look at those engines then you just need the two engine halves 51 and 52 and like everything from Kitty Hawk it wouldn't be a Kitty Hawk molded part if it didn't have those tabs all over the inside uh, for the most part you won't see any of those clip them out this one you're gonna have to clip out and sand a little bit you might catch a glimpse of that behind the uh, the exhaust fan same thing on the other side this is gonna be the uh, the exhaust parts this is all you need the afterburner ring and that that fan the intake fan is right there nicely molded oh look more tabs on the back you can see here we've got one engine, I, the, the one engine I detailed, I've installed, and I left the other one out to show you. Don't just drop these in and be like, okay, it's in, because that's not fully in. You have to take it, and you have to give it a little bit of a gentle nudge, and you'll hear it snap in. There you go. Now it's in. Now I just do the same thing I did here. I'm going to tack it in with some extra thin there, there, and on the bottom here to secure it. And then we will continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the cockpit into the cockpit opening here. So we've got the upper fuselage. We've got the cockpit. We've got this little part here, C6 it'll focus on it which has something to do with the canopy I think and it's supposed to go in here and then it's gonna pass through this little opening there my plan because I can't get it to stay in there is there's also two little I hope you can kind of see that. See, there's a little, two little indentations in there. So I'm going to drop this in here. And then you see these ribs. These ribs correspond to slots in the fuselage tub. So this is simple enough. Line up the slots and the ribs. Firmly. Turn this over to check it out. Make sure everything's lined up. Everything's going in. There we go. I was hoping for some reassuring click, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. And that still has some pivot to it, so I think I think I'm good because I don't know what position it's supposed to be in to begin with. There's the fit of the cockpit to the upper fuselage. Now I'll, I'll cement that in with a little bit of extra thin. Last thing we're going to do for this episode is we're going to install the uh, the nose gear bay into the uh, into the recess here in the uh, forward fuselage. It's actually the only way it'll fit. What what Kitty Hawk has done is they've molded some little tabs. Let's see if you can see that. You can see the see those raised tabs. So they've molded them into one side and they've done different ones on the other side. So it's it only goes one way. So let's get this put in. So there it is from underneath. Kind of get it to focus. Everything kind of lines up well. I think we're good. I think we're just about done with the first part of this build review. Let's recap. We've got the lower fuselage with the engines installed. With the, the intakes are lined up. So far it looks good. I'm still considering painting the forward portion of this engine to show it off with an open door. I don't know, but I'm seriously considering because it does look pretty decent. I've got the nose gear bay installed, it's in there, it's fit nice, uh, once you get past picking off 8,000 little nubs to, to get it together. Then we've got the, the upper fuselage, we've got the, the cockpit is assembled and installed, 
just needs a little bit of touch up in the back here where that unpainted peg is. Uh, so that's as far as we had to go with that. These are those those engine bays. I might leave this one open like I was saying for that that one engine. And it's there and this is a build review so might as well make it look good, right? So that's done. So I think we're done with this episode. Again, my thanks to Jim at Kitmaker for providing the, the Sequoia 30 kit for this build review. Uh, thank you. We're up to 47 subscribers now. I thank each and every one of you for, for tuning in and, and supporting me. And uh, I hope I can keep sharing my enjoyment of, of you know model building. I hope you guys enjoy what you see. Please let me know in the comments how you feel. Uh, you know, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I, I tell you every time, uh, I have no problem with, with getting a thumbs down. I, I just would like feedback when you do it. Just let me know why you didn't like it. Uh, aside from that, like and subscribe, as they say in the world of YouTube. And uh, we will see you in part two when we uh, will do the uh, main gear bays. We'll get the two fuselage halves together and you know, I, I think this is so far compared to the MiG-25 build. I think this is good. Um, I'm relatively happy with with the outcome so far. So I hope you'll come back for part two. And thanks again for tuning in.